Hey everyone, Adam with Arrowworks Productions and we're in the Arrowworks workshop today. Today we want to talk a little bit more about the Parrot Disco. Now if you're like us, you've been out flying your disco, having fun, enjoying the fully autonomous takeoff and landing, and the ease of flight with the Sky Controller 2. But let's take it up a notch. What can we actually do with our Parrot Disco? Now if you're familiar with the app, which hopefully you are because you've been flying it, you'll notice that on the left side there's something called Flight Plan. And this is an additional app, it's $19.95, that allows you to have full control over the autonomous waypoints that allows you to basically set not just an automatic takeoff and landing, but a variety of waypoints in between and include still photography, video, tilting the camera, all kinds of really cool features. So we wanna go ahead and show you that now. And when you first open up, or you per first you have to purchase the app of course, but once you enable the app, either in the App Store or the Android Store, once you go into the app, you're gonna have to pick which drone you're gonna be flying. In this case, we have the options of the Bebop, the Bebop 2, and the Disco. In this case, of course, we're gonna be flying the Disco. So we're gonna go ahead and touch on the Disco. Now you do need a Wi-Fi connection or a cellular connection to actually download the maps for the area that you wanna fly. Once you get to that area, it's as simple as basically touching on the map and adding your waypoints. Now what we're going to do here in a second, we're gonna show you a close up of this, of how you're going to tweak, uh, excuse me, tweak each waypoint and go into more detail on how you want the camera to behave while you're flying your mission. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right guys, now once you're in the Free Flight Pro app, you'll notice that on the left here, we have the Flight Plan app. Now if this is your first time going into it, it's gonna uh, prompt you to purchase the app. We have of course already purchased it, so we're gonna go ahead and go into it. Simply touch on the app. You're gonna notice that you have to choose a product, either the Bebop Original, the Bebop 2, or the Disco. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and select the Disco. Now we have our favorite uh, flying field picked here. We can move that around. You could, of course, you know, using satellite, you could select uh, your, your location. You can also choose um, a variety of different views. You can have, for instance, just the street. You can have satellite or the hybrid, which is the satellite with the street names on it. That's a totally uh, up to you. So let's just go ahead and throw some waypoints on here and get started. So we're just gonna simply add some waypoints around this area here. And you'll notice that uh, right out of the box, uh, when we hit the waypoints, you'll notice a 164 on all those. That is the altitude this mission is going to be flown at. Now, the Disco typically will climb up to about 150 feet. Um, you can obviously set that higher if you want to, and we're gonna show you how to do that. So let's start tweaking these waypoints. So the first waypoint, wherever you place that, um, that is the first waypoint that the Disco is going to climb to. So if we take off from, let's say, down here and we throw it into the wind, the first thing the Disco is gonna do is gonna climb up to 150, then it's gonna head to the first waypoint. Now one thing to note is that if your waypoint is really close to where you took off, it may circle at first to climb up to that 164 or whatever altitude you set, and we're gonna show you how to set that altitude, before it begins actually flying the mission. So let's say I wanna edit the altitude on this first waypoint. I'm gonna to touch on it for a second, I'm gonna hit edit. Now I have the option here to set the altitude. So let's say I want this to be 170 feet, I say OK, you're now going to see that it says 170, the S represents the start. Let's go ahead and go to waypoint number two. Now what's nice about all the, re uh, the remaining waypoints with the exception of the first and the last is that I now have a slider bar over here and I can simply slide my finger up or down and raise or lower that altitude. So again, we started at 170, let's say we want the mission to say or to climb to 180. Um, you can set it to 1A. You can also touch on it and edit it that way. Sometimes it's easier just to type in the number, but you can use the little slider function as well. So now we've taken off, we've climbed to 150, we've now headed towards our waypoint one uh, to where it's going to climb to 170. We've made 170, now the aircraft is gonna continue on to waypoint two and it's gonna climb to 180 and so on. So let's go ahead and make the rest of these 180 for the purposes of keeping the waypoints all the same. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly go in here and change these all to 180. Okay, and one more here. Edit and 180, and there we go. 
Okay, now at any time you can obviously drag the waypoint around to a different location. So if you don't like where it is, you can move these around at, as your leisure. Uh, just move them to where you want. Okay. So we have a basic mission here. Okay, now what, can, what else can we do with this? Well, we know what the takeoff is. That's fully autonomous. The aircraft's going to take off, climb to 150, then climb to waypoint one. But on the landing, we have some options. So if I touch on this landing point here, which is our last waypoint, you'll see that I get some other options. I can edit it. So if I wanted to change the altitude, I can do a linear landing or I can do a circular landing. So a linear landing is essentially a straight in landing. And you'll notice here that if I check that, I now get an end point, but I get a landing point as well. So you're going to need to move this around to accommodate where your landing point is. So if you want your aircraft to land, let's say right where that green dot is, you need to allow for enough space for the aircraft to descend down and land on that point. And you can see as I moved this linear landing back, it created a loop here because it needs that room to actually land. As I move this around, you can see that you still need that room. So this gives you an idea of the pathway that it's gonna to take to the landing point, And it gives you the opportunity to make sure you miss trees and things like that. Up until this point, the end point, your aircraft is gonna be at that 180 or whatever altitude you set. Once it hits that, it goes into a descent and it will land at that point the same way it lands when you hit the landing button. Now our other option is to hit the end point and do a circular landing and you'll notice that now we don't take up as much room but now we need to allow for that circular landing which in this case it would come back to the home point it would go into a, a tight orbit and continue descending until the aircraft is then pointed into the wind at which point it would just continue descending down until it landed that's a nice way to do it if you do have uh, somewhat tight quarters or you need to drop down into a space, you just need to be aware that that radius uh, may require a little bit more space side to side than the linear landing does. However, the linear landing requires a little bit more distance to set up properly. You can see here, we need to make a turn, we need to make another turn, and then we're going to descend down and we're going to hit our landing point. That's totally up to you. Now let's get into where we really can tweak the settings. So we have a basic mission set up here, and th this is what I would call like a top-down view. You can obviously zoom in on that, move it around how you want. We're gonna go ahead and touch, there's uh, three icons here. There's the back button, there is uh, a lock button, so if you don't wanna mess up your waypoints, and then there's also what we call essentially the profile. So this is a kind of a side shot of your mission here. So you have the takeoff right here, uh, which automatically triggers the camera to start rolling. Waypoint one, waypoint two, three, and so on. It also gives you the seconds between waypoints and the total mission time. So this total mission from takeoff to landing is two minutes and 28 seconds. Right now, looking at this from a side profile, all we're gonna do is take off, start the camera rolling, fly to these waypoints and land. Let's say we wanna get some advanced features in there. Let's say that when we approach waypoint three, we want to tilt the camera down and I can say the angle is let's say 45 degree angle down. You'll notice that the little shaded area even represents a 45 degree angle. Once I tilt down at 45, let's say I wanna do a photograph. So I'm gonna drag the photo down here. Now uh, we're telling the, the aircraft that we want to tilt down 45 degrees and then take a photograph. Now, one thing you do have to do here, you have to go in and set up what type of a photograph you want to take when you get to that spot. So you have some options here. You have a raw image, which is your best quality. You have JPEG, a snapshot, or a JPEG 180. And we're going to put a little uh, table on the screen that's going to show you there are some minimums uh, as far as times, the interval time that you have to enter there for these photos to come out correctly. So for instance, if I wanted to do a raw image like this, I have to make sure and set that to at least eight seconds, okay? And then I say, okay. The reason for that is the camera needs to be able to process those images and the different types of images take different amounts of times. 
So at the minimum, if you set it to the minimum, you're essentially going to get one photograph. If you say, well, I want a photo every 30 seconds, it's going to do kind of like a time lapse, or not a time lapse, but a interval type uh, photo every 30 seconds. So these are the minimums that you can do. Now you can see, so let's review this here. We have a takeoff, roll the video. When we get to waypoint two, tilt the camera down 45 degrees. When we get to waypoint three, take a raw image and then continue on waypoint four, five, and six, and then come back for our landing. So if you don't want to do something, if you want to delete something, you just simply touch on that item and drag it off and it goes back to the way it was. Now, if we wanted to fill that back in with video, we just simply drag the video down and the video completes there. Uh, you could leave the tilt if you want, if you wanted that camera to tilt down and continue video, or you could just take the tilt off and drag it away. Now, once you get it how you like, you're gonna hit the back button here and you have some options. You have some options as if we're out in the field and we're actually connected to our disco, we can hit the play button and simply start the mission, or we can hit the little loop back and sub start subtracting. It's kind of like a uh, undo button, undo and redo. So if you wanna move something or you change a setting, you can undo or redo here. And then the last function is our little folder here where we can actually save our mission. So we're gonna do save and we're gonna do disco test and we'll call it disco test and we say save. Now the nice thing about that is you can set up all of your missions ahead of time and repeat those missions. So if you wanna fly a mission and do it the exact same way daily or weekly or monthly or maybe you just like to fly the same pattern, you can simply go in here, select your mission and open it and there's your mission ready to go and you're ready to fly. So once your disco is connected through the normal means, you're just simply gonna hit the play button. So you can back out of here, go into your fly screen, get all your connections, make sure your format, your cards format and all that, your signal strength and battery is good. Back up here, hit the flight plan. Your last mission is ready to go and all you gotta do is hit that play button. So we have a mission that has already been loaded up in here. Um, and what we're gonna do is go ahead and fly this mission here, again, we're gonna launch from probably around this road area here. It's gonna climb up, gonna do its mission, uh, get to 150, fly here, and we can go ahead and take a look at the profile. And again, something similar as we did in the demo, we're going to get to waypoint three, tilt down, take a photo, and so on. Now, you're gonna have to experiment a little bit with this because there are some parameters, i.e. the camera settings, you're gonna also have to check and make sure that you have enough distance between waypoints so that you can actually take the photograph, tilt the lens down. So it is a little bit of trial and error. If you have some ideas and you wanna share those in the comments below, we'd surely appreciate that. Um, and I will also post the full manual down below for not only the uh, FreeFly app, but for the settings for flight plan. So let's go ahead and get outside and in part two of our disco flight plan review, you're going to actually see us fly this mission right here. And we'll go ahead and head out right now and get that started.